This story was written by Miss Croto's class, and it's called The Baby Band. There once was a baby named Tom. They had baby friends like Tanya and Bob. Tom didn't need their mom because Tom had a pretty great job in the milk factory. In the milk factory. The babies wanted to be musicians So they made a band to sing and to dance Baby band had a mission They found a club to give them a chance The official milk club The official milk club Tom and friends, the baby band They want to be the best in the land Sing and dance and clap your hands It's Tom and the baby band Tom and the Baby Band. Wow, Cuckoo Kook is performing at the official milk club next week. Cuckoo Kook? He's so kooky. He's also the greatest musician ever. Do you think he'd let us perform with him? When he sees that we're following our dreams, I'm sure he will. Baby Band wanted to perform with Cuckoo Kook, greatest musician ever. Mr. Kook was not nice and warm. He said, perform with me, never. And he stole the instruments, and he stole the instruments. Oh no, our instruments are gone? How can we perform with Cuckoo Kook now? Whoa! Whoa! Why are you crying? Tom, we're babies. Oh yeah, but that's no reason to cry. We have to find our instruments. Baby band the tie and low. Until they found a note on the floor Mr. Kook had ruined their show He hid the instruments behind a door Baby Man was furious Baby Man was furious Tom and friends, the baby band They want to be the best in the land Sing and dance and clap your hands It's Tom and the baby band Tom and the baby band you shouldn't make other people look bad Cuckoo Kook Everyone deserves a chance to play Cuckoo Kook We worked hard to get the chance we had Cuckoo Kook Let's work together And Mr. Kook said Okay Thanks to Tom and friends, the baby band Every musician is the best in the land We work together to take a stand With Tom and the baby band The baby band built a music store The crybaby crib opened its doors Music is for everyone forevermore Instruments everyone can afford Tom and friends, the baby band They wanna be the best in the land Sing and dance and clap your hands It's Tom and the baby band Tom and the baby band Tom and the baby band The End This story was written by Miss Box Class and it's called The Battle for Treasure. Once upon a time, there was a moon shadow elf named Midnight, and they were delivering a message to the king deep within the forbidden forest. They wanted the treasure hidden within the king's graveyard. They wanted the treasure for themselves so they could purchase the magical wand that creates anything but it was too expensive. The wand would be used to bring back her family that was no longer with her because of the humans. But there are zombies rising from the graves every few seconds. The king's arch nemesis brother, Strider Wolfer, has arrived and with the power granted to him by his wolves, he summons the dead as zombies from the grave. Then, Midnight handed the message to the king. It was a threat! Your treasure is mine, brother! Stated the message. 
The king then orders the knights to dispel the zombies and asks for the help of Midnight. Reluctantly, Midnight admits they want the treasure to bring back her family. The king promises that if they achieve victory, their wish would be granted. The knights and Midnight headed to battle, launching golden arrows at their foes. The enemies of the king use their magic to gather the golden arrows, and they morph them into bombs to throw them back. The bombs breach the castle, and on contact, they form tiny graveyards that start spawning even tinier zombies that took over the castle. Ever since that day, Two years has passed, and the attacks raged on. The king, in his desperation, decided they needed better protection. The old wizard of the castle used his magic to conjure a moat with zombie-eating alligators. Spriggan the creature has finally arrived, and grants a new power to the gators. The gators can now suck all the zombies into their mouths like a black hole. (laughs) And in a near instant, they all disappeared. (laughs) Now defeated, the wolves abandon Strider for the king, who remains powerful. With victory achieved, the king granted the treasure to those that helped, and the wand that creates anything was obtained by Midnight! The end! This story was written by Miss Round's class, and it's called The Story of Anna the Creative Goat. Once upon a time there was a real glad goat named Anna. She loved to do artwork and explore new, new things, things with, with science. science. And though Anna was glad, she couldn't Ooh. help but think what she had. And she lost her sparkly underground base. Underground base. Beautiful and secret sparkles like a star. my underground Hudson built a house and dug dug up her her place for his basement. basement. Anna needs more space because she's creating a huge self-portrait. Anna's last home was small. She needs more rooms and way more walls so people could see her home art gallery. Come and see my self-portrait. It looks like me. Come and see it has my eyes and my teeth. Come and see. Anna's very kind, but she's also sneaky. Hudson was distracted while she dug in the ground. She made a new house right under Hudson through a crystal cave with material she found. What's going on down here? It's too loud. Oh, uh, that was just my underground vehicle drill. Don't worry, Hudson. Take this headphone-shaped stress reliever. Don't be angry. Took 15 days for Anna to build her dream house. She was so glad to live in her new sparkly base. There was even an art museum full of crystals so people could see them. And best of all, her giant new self-portrait. New sparkly bay. I'm home at last again. New sparkly bay. And I'm neighbors with Hudson. New sparkly bays. New sparkly bays. New sparkly bays. The end. This story was written by Miss Franklin's class, and it's called 
What Turkey Woman Wanted Once upon a time, there was a person named Turkey Woman. She was a woman in a turkey disguise, and she lived in a secret underground chicken coop with a trillion chickens, an estate in the country squack world. I'm a woman named Gail, but I wear a turkey disguise. Just call me Turkey Woman. The secret underground chicken coop was owned by an evil farmer named Mr. No Chicken, but everyone ignored him. Why does everyone ignore me? It hurts my feelings and it makes me feel bad. I want to do something to get rid of all the chickens. Maybe that will make me feel better. He wanted to bury all of the Squack World tunnels so there would be no more chickens. Turkey Woman wants to go to the moon because she desires to figure out if Martians exist on the moon. But she doesn't have a rocket to fly up there. Then she glues 1,000 of the chickens together and packs some peanut butter and jelly. Before she left, she pressed a button under the hay bale, which squirts water at you if you're in the tunnel. So Mr. No Chickens, the farmer, can't bury the tunnel. Getting back at the chickens didn't make me feel better, and now I'm all wet. Then she says, Blast off! <laughs> and the chickens flap their wings and they explode to the moon. And ever since that day, she discovered that there are Martians on the moon. And luckily, they're made of bread. We are aliens. We come in peace. We also come in wheat, sourdough, and cinnamon raisin. Turkey Woman and the chickens spread the peanut butter and jelly on the Martians and gobbled them up. Then Turkey Woman remembered... Chickens can't breathe in space! The End This story was written by Madame Shablak's class, and it's called The Dance Performance. My name is Cuddly, I'm a toucan, and I live in the jungle. It's very busy, but quite beautiful. All the birds of the forest are dancers. Oh, it's the time for latest dance competition. Busy your mind for dance recital submissions. Oh, speaker music so loudly. Oh, birds dancing proudly. Oh, get your wings ready. Oh, graceful and steady. I want to be a professional ballet dancer in the U.S. It's the most popular destination to perform as a dancer. But there's no airport. I'd normally fly, but too lazy. Constantly airborne. Lackadaisical flapping. Oh, please, fellow dancers. Oh, give me a ride there. Oh, Krista Blue Dolphin. She offers to help him. My name is Krista, I'm professional, and I'm testing your talents. Is this too can work that? Time is precious, and my pirouettes are perfect. French Riviera, first stop for a contest. Era, participating without rest. Oh, I'm planning a flap dance. Oh, wings over all France. No, I'll execute an air flip. Backwards cartwheel and no trip. We are the judges, that was agile, not to mention cool fancy. But you surprised us, we found a booster on your back, that is cheating. I am so sorry for all my misleading, rip off this booster, now watch my wings beating. Oh, this is amazing, oh, our hearts are racing, oh, you want it badly, oh, that was so daring. Now I'm on an airplane, Krista swimming, on her way to the U.S. Seven hours later, on her sea swim, she arrived there before me. Well, it's about time. Let's enjoy cotton candy. I'm in my dance prime. Okay, how about a smoothie? Oh, they head to the studio. Oh, dancers so beautiful. Oh, new pro competitors. Oh, great as they enter. Oh, she's a pro. 
for you. How well can you dance? <laughs> Gracefully. Oh, birds dancing found me. Oh, music so found me. Oh, graceful and steady. Oh, color is ready. Ba-doom, ba-doom, boom, the end. This story was written by Miss Shablak's class, and it's called Chloe vs. the Robo Dogs. Once upon a time, there was a robo dog named Chloe. That's me, Wolf. She wanted an owner because she wished to have a better life. It would be nice to play, fetch, and be a good girl. Chloe was in Corglandia on a trip. It was fun and crazy, but also dangerous because of the vicious honey badgers. Big Brain, the mad honey badger, was capturing robo dogs. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm so mad. He was using them to create boxing robots. Yes, yes. Punch, punch, punch. All the boxing robots frightened the corgis away. What are those? Ah! All the plants around Corglandia were now dying because the corgis are what make the plants live. This was stopping new corgis from being born from their buds. Uh. Have I had the right plant? This plant is dead. Did they cancel the puppy shower? Chloe asked her friend, the Corgi Princess, for help. Hello. Hi, Corgi Princess. Hi. We have a problem. Big Brain is making boxing robots out of robo-dogs, and they are scaring all your Corgi subjects away. Oh, well, we can't have that. I will assist you. The Corgi Princess helped Chloe by ordering all the royal guards to stop the evil honey badger. Guards, go get him. Go get him. Go get him. Big Brain then set all the robo-dogs to mean mode. And they attacked the royal guards. Woof, woof, snarl, snarl. Then... The original owner of the robo-dogs arrived and walked into Corglandia. He was able to help them by flipping all the switches of the robo-dogs back to their original modes. They were no longer rude. <laughs> the robo-dogs, including Chloe, then chased off Big Brain the Honey Badger. Oh no! Chloe was very happy to be back with her original owner and all her robo-dog friends. Everyone in Corglandia then became a millionaire, and the plants grew up to be the biggest plants they had ever seen. The End This story was written by Miss Joyston's class, and it's called The Queen's Christmas Tree. Santa's daughter Snowflake stuck in a tall bright tree Looking around at all the details she could see She wanted for Santa a Christmas tree surprise But now she is stuck up there because of her tiny size She ate a strawberry cake with a mysterious fungus that made her small Meanwhile in a royal car the Queen's helpers came For Buckingham Palace a Christmas tree to claim they wanted to bring back the best tree to the queen. Snowflake's tree was the most elegant they'd seen. They chopped, chopped, chopped it down and brought it to the palace. The queen's guards were standing and guarding the Christmas tree. Then Snowflake leapt down onto the ornament so she could be free. As she leapt and landed perfectly on a present I got you a present, can I see it? When Ted gave Leo his present, 
They know the snowflake and they put her in a candy jar to give her to the queen. The queen was surprised and said, Oh, golly goodness gracious, what are you doing here? Snowflake said, I was on the tree your guards picked out, and then they put me in this jar. The queen said, Nonsense! I'm going to let you go, but first you will stay for a royal dinner. I just want to go home. But this was Christmas Eve, and soon Santa arrived. Santa spotted Snowflake while he was leaving toys in Buckingham Palace to bring the children joy. Snowflake yelled out, Santa, when she saw him come here. He said, Holy candy canes, how did you get here? Snowflake explained what happened and asked, Can you please take me home? I've been here for six and a half hours. Santa put Snowflake back in the sleigh, and they rode together at the end of the day, back to their cottage, their home in Finland. And this is where the story will end. The End This story was written by Miss Crenshaw's class, and it's called The Lonely Poodle. Once upon a time, there was a shelter named Puppy Paradise Hotel. We have 50 million animals! One of the pups who lived there was a unique poodle named Lavender. Her fur color could change with her emotions. Oh, how I wish I could have children one day. They will surely give me all the attention I desire. Her fur color is purple because right now she's in between jolly and disappointed. But I don't have a man and I'm stuck in this shelter. Hey, look at that color changing poodle. Oh, oh, and then Lavender bit three people at the shelter. Oh, they left the door unlocked. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm free as a bird. And with that, Lavender ran all the way to the park and met... Hi, huh. I'm Cray Cray. Why, hello there, Cray Cray. I'm Lavender. And then she decided to marry him. Congratulations, you two. And they had two puppies, Honey and Otis. And then she ditches him. Bye-bye. I only desire kids, not a husband. And ever since that day, she lived happily ever after with her kids. And they barged in on people and stole their pizza every Friday. It's Friday, y'all. Yay! Yay! Hey, what are y'all doing with my pizza? And now we can see that Lavender is finally happy. Notice how now her fur color is golden yellow because she's excited and having fun. Her babies can change their hair color too, but only a few emotions. Scared is purple, proud is orange, and fear is black. And later they were all adopted by a nice owner in California. The end. This story was written by Ms. Crenshaw's class, and it's called Marty the Lima Bean's Adventure. Meet Mrs. Bigglesworth. She likes to eat sandpaper. Mmm, this sandpaper is delicious. Let's zoom in closer to her green tongue and the taste buds on her tongue. Ah, yes, here's the taste bud we want, the one with spikes on it. That's where we'll find Marty the Lima Bean. He's Marty the Lima Bean. He is never, ever mean. He lives here in this pot. 
He's Marty the Lima Bean, cutest bean you've ever seen, living in the taste but on Miss Bigglesworth's green tongue. I need to get a pet. I know just what I'll get. I'll get a lima bean dog. We'll go outside on walks. Every day we'll walk a lot. We'll walk and walk and walk and sheesh. He'll grow into a big lima bean dog and grow and grow and grow and Oh, dear. Hmm. Maybe I need something smaller. I'm changing my mind. I wish for a hamster. I'm Marty the lima bean. I'm looking for a hamster. I think this is a better idea. Won't have to take him outside, and hamsters are quite small. He'll hardly take up any space at all. But I don't know where to find a hamster. I mean, I live on a tongue. I don't know of any hamsters, not even one. Oh, hi, Marty. Hi there, cat. What you doing? I'm just out on a jog. I was on another taste bud, and then I got lost. What's up with you? You look a bit glum. I want a hamster, but I don't know where to find one. Oh, Marty, silly lima bean, calm yourself and be serene. I bought a hamster in a shop near your house. The shop is right next door in the same taste bud. We just go north or maybe south. Uh, just follow me and uh, we're lost. Oh, yeah. Ooh, what was that noise? Hold on. Mrs. Bigglesworth just ate some sandpaper. You know what that means. Went up from the heavens of the stomach in an air bubble. Oh, look, Marty, it's a map created from all the organs in Miss Bigglesworth's body. From the sandpaper that she likes to eat, we'll find the shop now. The map tells us the right street. Oh, I'm Marty the lima bean. I would like a hamster, please. That one is cute and tiny. She's fuzzy and the perfect pet. I'm sure she is the best pet yet. I think I'll name her Sunny. Oh, how cute. He's Marty the lima bean with Sunny the hamster. He is joyous now. With the help of his friend Cat and the sandpaper map, Everyone made it home, and Marty's not alone. It's Marty and Sonny. Everything's a little funny when you're living in a taste bud on a green tongue in Mrs. Bigglesworth's mouth. Delicious burp. The end. This story was written by Miss Croto's class, and it's called A Perfect Money World. In a perfect money world Since I own the money factory All the money would be lent by me, Zoe But in the current funny world Even though I live in a diamond castle Lending money is such a hassle Woe is me I'm so glad that I have Barb Mayor Barb She's the one they put in charge In charge She's the perfect mayor Money lender Cause me, I'm just the money sender I send it to Barb so she can lend it to those in need Hi, Zoe Hi, Mayor Barb uh, another money order for those in need? In need indeed. All this money is going straight to the folks who need it the most. I wish I could see the looks on their faces when they get all this money. You'll be sure to lend some to the homeless this time, right? Uh-huh. It's my greatest wish that everyone has a good home for all their children. Absolutely. And comfortable things inside Oh, yes, it. they're all very comfortable. Thanks again, Zoe. Oh, and by the way, Money Factory's looking a little, shall we say, messed up lately. I sure hope you can keep up with all the money we're going to be spending lending soon. Okay, bye. She's right. What a mess. In a perfect money world, people would stop messing with my factory and let me lend this money peacefully. Peacefully. But it's a dirty money world. And that disintegrating wall right there needs two very long weeks of wall repair. Not fair. 
I need someone who has heart, real heart. And they need to be quite smart, quite smart. Someone who looks like a Cheeto but doesn't taste it. Cause if they taste like a Cheeto, I don't want to waste it. I know who I need to solve this mystery. It has to be. Zoe came into my office and right away I knew she had heart, real heart. The only thing that could make me take on a case like this. I'm Cheeto Cop. I look like a Cheeto, but I don't taste it. If anyone asks, I taste like poisonous fur with venom. And definitely not a Cheeto. I knew what I had to tell her wasn't going to be easy, but the fact was, when it came to who was messing with the money factory, I had my eye on a certain public figure by the name of Barb. Barb? But that's my favorite person. But I've caught her stealing money before, and something tells me she's involved. And if my read on Barb is right, then hidden in plain sight, there's a tunnel most confidential to a mansion, quite essential, with an undiscovered basement which clever Barb likes to call her macement. So Barb was playing a trick, keeping all the money for the rich, so she would always be their pick for mayor. And in light of this event, event, we filled her tunnel with cement, cement. And we painted the wall the same old hue, so no one would ever have a clue. Then Cheeto Cop put Mayor Barb in jail. But the way the story ends, Barb stops stealing and makes amends. And she never breaks my factory again. So Cheeto Cop lets her go. And I pay him to guard my diamond castle so no one ever ruins my things. And everybody sings. It's, it's a, a perfect, perfect money world. The end. This story was written by Miss Box Class, and it's called Oreo and the Friendly Yeti. Once upon a time, on the grassy island that never stops growing, Oreo the bunny was hopping around in his happy land. Hi, I'm Oreo the bunny. When suddenly, he felt a couple of snowflakes fall from the sky. Whoa, snow. I wonder if it's coming from the Yeti land up in the clouds. But Oreo the bunny was feeling lonely. I wish I had some bunny friends to enjoy this snow with, but I haven't had any friends in a while because I'm stuck on this remote island that's surrounded by water. <sighs> the other bunnies are trapped in a prison under water because of Anti-Bunny Boy. Sulum, capture all the bunnies and put them in an underwater prison. They are simply too cute to handle. Rawr! Sulum trapped the bunnies in spite of the yetis because they are all friends at the order of his owner. Then, a giant creature falls from the sky and lands in front of Oreo. Whoa! You're a yeti from Yeti Land! Oh, you don't speak funny! Hmm. Friendly Yeti guides Oreo to the prison safely. Hi, bunny friends. The Friendly Yeti and I are gonna help you escape. Tonight, play dead so that the guard is fooled into opening the gate. Got it? Okay, see you tonight. Huh? They're dead? Hmm. Well, might as well open the gate. Well, time for a nap. <laughs> the bunnies hop on the friendly yeti's tough fur and escape. <laughs> huh? 
They're gone. And ever since that day, they all became friends. Since there is so much grass on the island, the bunnies decided to open a cafe, and it was a huge success. Order up grass smoothie. Order up grass pizza. Order up grass dipped in grass sauce. And our most popular item, order up grass burger with grass fries. The bunnies built bridges so everyone could come from far and wide to enjoy the island's unlimited grass. The end. This story was written by Miss Joyston's class, and it's called Baby Bunnies Are Naughty. I'm like the baby bunny and I'm being very naughty. I'm stealing other kids' toys, don't care about nobody at the baby bunny daycare in the veggie forest. I take what's not mine, from biggest to smallest. I want all the Paw Patrol, Legos, and race cars. Put them all together, make a magnificent car, and speed back home to my ma and pa. If I didn't have some wheels, it would be too far. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, hopping into mischief, being very naughty. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, looking real tough while I'm going through your stuff. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, Finding all the joy from taking all your toys. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny. Being very naughty until somebody saw me. A little baby bunny named Rose tattled to the teacher. She stopped me in my tracks before I had a chance to reach her. Miss Lovely, Mike is stealing all the toys. That little baby bunny made a whole lot of noise. Miss Lovely snatched all the toys, locked them up real quick. In the closet with her teleporting my trick. Meanwhile, Miss Fluffy dropped his wallet, so to the corner where it fell, I tiptoed in a gallop. That dad was wearing glasses and a mustache. She was picking up Max, who was in the same class. I socked it, I locked it, I put it in my pocket. You stole it? Yeah, I stole it. I saw it on the carpet. What can I say? I took advantage of an opportunity that allowed me to get money. I'm a naughty little bunny. I steal and I take and I think it's all funny. Bad bunny. Bad baby bunny, hopping into mischief, being very naughty. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, looking real tough while I'm going through your stuff. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, finding all the joy from taking all your toys. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, being very naughty, hope that nobody saw me. I stepped up to Miss Lovely, made my puppy eyes, please. Can I have it back? I promise to be nice. She said, uh. I can't resist a little face. With her mind, she teleported in the back in their place. I skipped up to Miss Lovely, make my puppy eyes. Please, can I have it back? I promise to be nice. She said, uh, I can't resist a little face. With her mind, she teleported them back in their place. And ever since that day, I worked very hard. Created a motorcycle out of all those race cars. Legos and a Paw Patrol car. A ride so cool it dropped everyone's jaw. I drive it to school and home every day while I wear my diamond rings and a golden chain. I bought an Ace Hardware, yeah, I made it rain with the hundred dollar bills from Mr. Fluffy. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, hopping into mischief, being very naughty. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, looking real tough while I'm going through your stuff. Bad bunny, Bad baby bunny, finding all the joy from taking all your toys. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, being very naughty and nobody saw me. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, hopping into mischief, being very naughty. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, looking real tough while I'm going through your stuff. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, finding all the joy from taking all your toys. Bad bunny, bad baby bunny, being very naughty and nobody caught me. Miss Lovely! Mike the baby bunny, did you take everyone's toys and Mr. Fluffy's wallet? Uh-oh. The end. 
our next story was written by Ms. Rounds Class, and it's called The Story of the Lonely Pencil in Markerland. Um, hi. I'm Ryder. I'm a pencil that lives in Markerland, but only because it's the only land I could find. Howdy, y'all. What a marvelous afternoon we're having. Get out of here, Ryder. We don't want a pencil in our grip. Yeah, didn't you read the sign? This is Marker Land. Uh, I don't like when they do that. I want to destroy that group. They make me feel left out. <laughs> Luckily, I'm a mad scientist. Hello? You have some water? I'm very tired, and this is the only land I could find. Sure, here's some water. <laughs> Wait, this isn't water. Oh, sorry. I guess this is my water. I must have given you the mad scientist juice. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> Ah, uh, a blessing and a curse. But now, I am an extreme scientist. This is my robot. Check out his net. He's supposed to catch the markers that are always rolling away. Hey, why don't we get to know each other? Absolutely not. Mmm, <laughs> is that barbecue I smell? Yeah, but none of it's for you. Can we please be friends? <laughs> I'm only friends with markers. Hmm, it seems my plan didn't work. But I have a plan B. I'm going to disguise myself as a marker. Hey, who's a new guy? Howdy, Pink Honey. Welcome to Markerland. Want to play water soccer tag with us? Yeah! Our team needs another player. That sounds great, you guys. I'm Ryder. Wait, where is the ball? Who cares? Let's just swim! Whoa, Ryder. What's going on? He's not really a marker! Yeah, I'm sorry I lied. What are we going to do? Bros, I feel bad. Yeah, yeah us, us too. too. It's me not to let him be part of our group. How would you feel if you didn't get to be part of the group? Ugh, I would feel bad. I would feel left out. Okay, I think we've reached a consensus. Hey, Reuter. We think you're a lot of fun. Sorry we didn't realize it before. Want, Want to be, be part, part of our group? group? Yeah. The end. This story was written by Ms. Franklin's class, and it's called The Time Machine That Ran on Flower. In the year 2160, there lived two creepy ghosts, one ladies in a spooky, stinky, abandoned castle hotel. Their names were Lara and Elise, and they were sisters with a dream to decorate the castle in which they dwell. They want to know how their ancestors decorated the castle hotel. Their time machine can take them back to 1987 so they can tell. But they require flour, they need it to power their time machine. The baking kind. They require flour so they can fulfill their time traveling dreams. The power of the flour can help their decorating scheme. But all the sisters' flour was wasted They keep dumping it on their faces They love how it looks and it feels nice on their face The flour falls off, they drench themselves with more It's so relaxing but they can't afford it They go through five pounds of flour a day 
Then a man shows up with a white beard and a top hat Like Abraham Lincoln His name is Clara and he's selling cows He has 50 bags of flour and the sisters want it They convince him to give them some by playing the harp for him Wow, you play the harp really lovely. I'll give you a hundred pounds of flour. They acquired flour, they'll use it to power their time machine. The baking kind. They acquired flour so they can fulfill their time traveling dreams. The power of the flour can help their decorating scene. The very next day, Laura and Elise used the flower to turn on the time machine. They traveled back to 1987. They gave their ancestors a visit and learned their decorating secret. A most important beautifying lesson. They used flowers, pretty petals and blossoms. Swan lady shouted, The decorating is so awesome! They used flowers they got from their garden to decorate the botanical kind. Laura and Elise loved how it looked and it smelled so great. Colors of the flowers helped their decorating. They felt accomplished and their home looked amazing. The power of the flowers helped their decorating scheme. The end. We are the Story Wranglers. We are the Story Wranglers. We are the Story Wranglers.